we're here in Abbey Leaks Library. It's Family History Day, and there's so many people here helping us look back into our past and trace our roots. And with me now is Niall Cullen from findmypast.ie. Niall, so what exactly will you be doing here today? Uh, well, basically, we're here to help people, as you said, build their family tree, trace their roots, go back in time. Um, it's to do with the 1916 rise, and obviously that's a big thing in Ireland at the moment, um, it, the centenary year. So everybody's kind of getting interested in their family history and where they come from and, and if they were involved in the 1916 rise. And so findmypast.ie is a family history website, and they can build their family tree online for free there. And we've got millions of records, records, over 110 million Irish records, the biggest collection online, um, where they can look back at family history records, um, add, it, add the records to their tree and build up a family story of where they came from. Now, how does that work? Do I go online, type in my name and go from there or what way does it work? Yes, so you can go start by going to www.findmypast.ie and basically from the homepage you can do a search for anyone that you might know in your history. So you might not get a result if you put your own name in, but certainly your grandparents or great grandparents' names, if you put that in, you'll get a results back and you'll see records of your actual great grandparents in a couple of seconds. Fiona Fitzsimons, you're the director of Enaclan. When did you set up Enaclan? I set up Enaclan with Brian Donovan in 1996. We were both graduate students in the School of History in Trinity College, and we were looking for ways of funding our PhDs. So we found that family history, there was a growing interest in it. And at that point, we set up a business, incorporated two years later. We had the backing of the School of History and the backing of the University. Our association with Trinity College is our gold bar. In a sense, it is our, it's our mark of quality that we have the skills necessary to do family history research, but it's also our mark of reliability. We're uh, an established company. Um, we do very good work. And over the years, um, you must have met so many interesting people. Was there ever a moment where people, when they went back into their past, that they'd rather they hadn't? <laughs> um, there were very few things that people... There are very few things in the past, I think, that people would shy away from. You're not responsible for what your ancestors might have done in the past. We have come across just about everything you can imagine. Open up a newspaper now. Anything that you see, any crimes, violence, murders, um, you will encounter that. The archives are a, they are a record of what's happened in the past. And although society changes, it doesn't change that much. I know Fiona was saying that you had the exciting task of looking after President Obama when he was here. You traced that family back to... Back to the 1690s, yes. Pretty amazing. Now, I know you got to meet um, the First Lady. Yes, Michelle and the two girls. They were probably jet-lagged, but they were still very interested in the story. And what was their story? What, what, did they, what did you find out? Well, we traced them, the Carneys back to um, Sh um, Shinrone, where they were, um, they were involved in the wig-making... Um, process and amazing yes yeah and then Michelle said something to the girls uh, relating to hair and shoes it was shoes as well because when the Carnies left Ireland they were cobblers in the 1840s so amazing fashion um, fashion shoes. industry yes. and Michelle who's beautiful and always looks amazing oh she's very striking brilliant you know lovely very tall beautiful hands you can't yeah, so her past really influenced her present. Well, possibly, but except it wasn't her side of the family. It was, um, <laughs> it was the president's side. <laughs> well, it influenced somehow yeah. then. <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe, yeah. But, um, what did the girls think of that? Uh, I think they were both very interested. Um, when, when, when they arrived there, Fiona said, welcome to Hogwarts, and they thought that was a great laugh. But I'm sure they were also very tired. You know. <laughs> Gillian Cunningham, you're an assistant here in Abbey League's library. How are things going at the moment for the library? 
Things are great, Angela. Things are really good here in the library. Our borrower numbers are up. Um, it's free now for everybody to join the library from all age groups. And um, we have lots of talks as well going on at the moment for the 1916 commemorations, which are all free. We have um, our chess, which is every Saturday. We have our knitters who come in on Wednesdays. Everything is free to come to. And we have French classes, which are starting this evening, and they're also free and will be running for six weeks. I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed listening to what Niall and Fiona had to say about tracing our family history and the importance of it. So you have to leave me to it because I'm going to check out my own family now. We're here in Dunamay's Art Centre for the official launch of Home, a book written by local man John Dunn. John, we're here in Port Leash and we're here for your launch. It's a very special night. You must be very proud. Oh, I am indeed. I'm particularly proud that. Um I have documented aspects of my hometown. Um, my family has been in Port Leisha for nearly 200 years. And I, I feel proud that, um, without sounding arrogant, that I'm leaving something behind me for my own children primarily, grandchildren and future generations. And uh, so I'm very proud. And I'm also particularly proud that the book was designed by my own son. I'm particularly proud of that, particularly. And I love that you also have another son. He's, he's viewing from Canada, is that right? That's right. John, John's in Canada. John is in Canada about a year now. And he's, as we speak, he's actually in the middle of his first solo exhibition this week. So it's a busy week for the Duns. And a very artistic family. Um, tell us a bit more about the book. Um, what would people find most interesting? I hope they find, um, there might be a bit a bit disconcerted at first to find that it's it's a mixture of fiction. Part one is strictly fiction. Part two is heavily documented history. And um, so well, it's roughly half and half, but they're very much interconnected with the result that if, if an incident or an event happens, say, in a particular place in, in a fiction story, it might happen without any comment. But later in the historical part of the book, you'll find the history of that area and my idea is that it works as a kind of, um, as a mosaic. I hesitate to say a jigsaw, but mosaic. That when you're finished, you feel, yeah, I know Port Leash. This is the way Port Leash was in the past. And then the fiction, I hope, gives the idea that this is the way Port Leash is now. So you end up with a, a fairly comprehensive composite picture of life in my town. And I love that, because I was going to ask you um, if in years to come when people are writing about this time in history, what do you think will stand out the most with our present time, but look, you know, going forward? Well, in the case of Port Leisha, what it certainly is how much the town has changed in the last 15 years. It's no different to what's happening worldwide. You know, globalization has hit Port Leisha as much as it hit anywhere. The, the big problem in Port Leisha is the demise of small indigenous local shops and businesses. That's the big problem. You know, there's in the, in the new part of town now, where all the big companies have come in, you could be in any English-speaking country in the world. You know, and, and personally, I'm inclined to be nostalgic by nature anyway, but I, I regret that. You know, and then it's, uh, and the older I get, the more I regret that, you know, that I like things to be, the, I, I find virtue in things that stay the same. That's just me. Your book, Home, what do you hope people will get from it? What do you want them to get from it? On a very basic level, I hope they'll say, God, that, that was a great book. I recommend it to me, to whoever. And as I said earlier, I just hope people... Yeah, yeah I know what living in Port Leash is like. If you have a friend of yours living anywhere in the world, you can give them this book and say, this is Port Leash, warts and all. And I can imagine that it's not just a person from Port Leash that could pick this book up. It's for everybody. Well, that's what I, I'm hoping. So, um, initially, my target audience are Port Leisha people, to be honest with you. But the fact that there's half of it is fiction, you know, I hope the stories, the fiction stories will find resonance with people from Timbuktu to Taiwan, you know. And in your research, have you ever come across something, you know, that shocked you, surprised you, enlightened you? No, uh, 
the one thing that, that has come to me from history is how little things have changed. Like, it's the professional classes who, who ruled Ireland 200 years ago, and it hasn't changed. It is still the professional classes, the bankers. It was no different 200 years ago. Ireland was ruled by bankers and the professional elite. And it's like that. It's still like that. And you talk about legacy and what you'd like to, for people to remember you by and you know that your book would be there forever. What are you hoping will change along the line that, you know, for your family, for their kids? I have no great hopes of changing anything, to be honest with you. I, I see myself more as a, as a documenter, you know, a, a documentarian. I have documented where Port Leisha was, and then I've given my uh, fictional, my creative version of what Port Leisha is as well. And I'm just hoping, as I, and I keep coming back to the initial thing, that it's a picture that people will say, God, that's what, I know what Port Leisha is like, having read John Donne's book. And congratulations. Home, it's going to be in all good bookstores, I'm assuming. And it is indeed, and available online to throughout the world, worldwide, on my website, portlishpictures.com. That's wonderful. Listen, go and enjoy your book launch. You deserve it. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Congratulations and well done to John Dunn on a brilliant book launch about his book, Home. But sadly, we have run out of time for tonight. I really hope you've enjoyed the show, but remember to tune in at the same time next week because Leash County Matters.